This unit is going to cover transformation. And we're going to go through this together. We're going to go through an experiment, well, the setup for an experiment together. We will then go through the experiment. And then at the end, we will go through the results of the experiment. So there's going to be three videos for this section. So what we're talking about, and this is a, in a lab setting, is we are talking about transformation with bacteria cells. And in this particular example, Escherichia coli or E. coli. So what is transformation? Transformation is where bacteria cells will take in DNA from an external source, either a plasmid DNA or a piece of DNA, and then they will then transcribe and translate the sections on that DNA strand to produce new traits. Essentially, they will take the genes from DNA from an external source and they will use those genes to help make the cell better or survive within an environment. They're called luxury genes. So a little bit of background, what we do at Howard College, we use BioRad, a company that actually makes uh, micro, experiment, uh, micro experiments. And I'm gonna make this full screen. And just to give you a little idea, oops, what we're talking about. So this is one of the kits that we would be using in a lab class. They come in this box. Now the Petri plates in this particular experiment are very small. They're kind of mini Petri plates. These yellow uh, parts over here are actually plastic inoculating loops. Now, the video you're going to watch in which the experiment is going to be done, they're actually using the real loop. And then over here, and then including, well, over here and including this are some transfer pipettes. This is actually a little light. It's essentially a black light, but it's a UV light. And then here you have all the solutions that are involved. In fact, that little vial there is probably arabinose, which is a sugar. Uh, excuse me, yes. Uh, these are amphicillin. These are the little plasmid vials. And um, anyway, this is what you used when making the media. You add different things to it to set up the parts of the experiment. And here's the, and that looks like there, that's the powder for the auger. But this is a lab kit. And this is what we'll be using in this experiment. Now, uh, a little bit of background here. This is a genetic transformation. We're going to take some E. coli cells that normally do not glow green in the dark. And normally, E. coli, Escherichia coli, is killed by the antibiotic amphicillin. And we're going to do an experiment that's hopefully going to transform some cells to make them resistant to amphicillin and also under a UV light, they will glow green in the dark. So um, here's what we're going to be doing. Now we are using, this company has been able to isolate the gene from a jellyfish. It's Acoria victoria. So here we have the green bioluminescent jellyfish Acoria victoria. And this experiment is based on a company named BioRad has isolated the gene that creates this green glowing effect in these bioluminescent jellyfishes. And that's what our experiment is based on. Green fluorescent protein causes the jellyfish to fluoresce and glow in the dark. And you saw that. So following the transformation procedure, the bacteria express their newly acquired jellyfish gene to produce the green fluorescent protein. And we're also going to hopefully make them resistant to amphicillin. So to go back up here, um, remember that a gene is a piece of DNA which provides instructions for making codes for or a protein. Yeah, it's called transcription and then translation. Um, genetic transformation can be used in all different kinds of areas, and we're going to do a simple little experiment that's going to show that. So I'm going to go down here. Now, what this is showing, a little diagram, uh, a DNA piece um, like this, when it's transcribed within a cell, you make this strand of what's called messenger RNA. That's transcription. And what then happens next is 
this piece of messenger RNA will move out to a ribosome attached to it, and that's where it's translated. And what this is showing, basically, following the genetic code, all the appropriate amino acids are placed in place, and then you make a protein. So in this case, we're hoping to do an experiment to force a cell to make two things. Um, we're hoping it to make an enzyme that will make it resistant to amphicillin. And we're also hoping to get it to make um, a protein called a green fluorescent protein. And we're going to do that through what is called plasma DNA. Plasma DNA contains genes for one or more traits that may be beneficial to bacteria to survive. And they occur naturally in the environment. The plasma DNA we're using in this experiment is man-made, is synthetic. BioRad's unique pigloplasmid encodes for a gene, this stands for a green fluorescent protein, and a gene for resistance to the antibiotic amphicillin. Um, and that's essentially the experiment. And this is how their plasmid is set up. Now, I would kind of ignore this. We don't get that detailed with it. But here is the section for the green fluorescent protein. We want the cell to transcribe and translate that section of this plasmid. And then here's a section for the beta lactamase gene. Uh, and that's the sign for beta. And what that means is it will be resistant to amphicillin. This, this particular, and, and really we're coding for a beta lactamase enzyme that will break up amphicillin. So I'm going to go back down here a little further. So there it is. So here is a bacteria cell. See, here's the bacterial chromosome. And then here are plasmids. And like I said, plasmids occur naturally in the environment, which is really fascinating. The one we're using here is actually man-made, synthetic. It does not occur naturally. The p plasmid doesn't exist naturally. And um, this little diagram is just showing. So what will happen is these plasmids will get inside the cell. And then the cell will then transcribe and translate those sections of DNA along the plasmids. Because a plasmid is a, basically it's a double-stranded DNA ring. And there's three right there. This one's up close, those two are further, far away. Okay, now we're going to go through the steps to set up the experiment. Each workstation should contain a foam rack with an empty pink and blue tube with the lids closed an orange tube labeled T with one mil of transformation solution, a yellow tube labeled LB with one mil of Luria Bertani broth, a starter plate with visible colonies growing on it, one LB plate, two LB amp plates, and one LB amp era plate, a bag of sterile inoculation loops, and five sterile transfer pipettes, a beaker containing ice, and a waste pot containing a 10% bleach solution. Immediately prior to the lesson, you'll need to rehydrate the Piglo plasmid. Rehydrate this with 250 microliters, that's a quarter of a mil of transformation solution. This will be shared throughout the class. Now you're ready to do the Piglo bacterial transformation experiment. Have fun. We are now gonna go through the beginning or the setup for the experiment. Now you have access to this lab guide. I'm gonna come back to this when we actually do the experiment. The way this is posted, you can click on these little arrows up here and you can actually enable a thing called a hand tool. It allows you to move it around. I think that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna get it in the middle. I might make it just a tad bigger. There we go. Actually, smaller is better. So what this is, this is the setup guide. And if you're going to do an experiment in lab, you would follow these guys. Now you see the two little tubes here. Here's a pipette. Here is transformation solution. Here's ice. Uh, the inoculating loops, either the plastic or you can do the ones where you have to heat them. Um, the racks, which are the styrofoam racks, the ice, and then here are the small plates and you see how they're all labeled. So I'm gonna go through the video that you just watched. It's pretty short. And I'm going to make this bigger, and we're going to go through this together. Now, this is the setup. If you were a teacher, of course, and she's talking, you just watch this. And... So that way I can pause this. Oh, my goodness. Um, so here was the eye she referred to. Here are the little styrofoam boats. 
and you poke the holes out, here are the tubes involved, there are the inoculating loops, and then here are all the small little micro plates involved, and here are the pipettes. And then this is a waste container to get rid of uh, different things as you go through the experiment. So here are the tubes. This is Luria broth. This is transformation solution. And then these two tubes, and you'll see in the video experiment, are the ones that are going to be used during the experiment. You will label one of these with a negative and one with a positive. You would fill each one halfway, basically. You would take half the fluid um, in, in these tubes, and you would divide them up between the two tubes. As a matter of fact, and, and I, I was hoping to leave it maybe mysterious, but the transformation solution, you're going to add those to these two tubes. So next she's going to go around and she went around and showed you. So here's the starter plate. Here is some E. coli, Escherichia coli. These are individual colonies. So what you would do is you would actually take uh, those two tubes, one with the plus and minus, you would take your loop, you would pick up one of these colonies, the whole thing, and you would add it to one test tube. And then you would take another loop, or you'd sterilize your loop, take another colony, and add it also to the other tubes. So you're going to add your bacteria to the plus and the minus tubes. This is a starter plate. It's just labeled as LB, Luria broth. This is a control plate to test for growth. Now, these two plates, while you're making the media, and um, while you're preparing the media, and that'll be the next video, this is LB, this AMP stands for ampicillin. So what that means is in the process of making the auger, there's a step where you actually pour in, in a liquid form, the antibiotic ampicillin along with the auger before it cools. So when you watch the video on making media, keep that in mind. The auger starts out liquid, and when you mix it in, and when you pour it in the plates, you wait for it to solidify. You add the ampicillin during that process for these two plates. And then basically, you would pour those plates first, and then this plate here has Luria broth, ampicillin, and the ARA stands for arabinose, the sugar. You would add that in last. So you would have a, a series of plates that just had the LBAMP. You would push those to the side after you pour them, and you would pour the remaining plates that have all three of these things. And that's how the experiment is set up. There are the loops. And the video you're going to watch, they actually use heat. Here are the sterile pipettes. And there's the ice for uh, the incubating time, and there's a waste bucket. The only thing I'll say now is, uh, and that's the plasmid, let me back this up. In the background over here is a water bath. And that is used for a method that's called heat shock. There's a point in the experiment where you would actually float little styrofoam boats with the tubes inside, with the bacteria, in the water bath. And you go from basically the ice that's here, you keep them on ice, you would then transfer them to the water bath for 30 seconds and then you transfer them back to the ice. It's called a heat shock method. And that's the part where she's referring to the plasmid, the little rings of DNA. You're going to add those only to the plus tubes during the experiment, and we'll go through that together. And she said, have fun. So next, watch this video on media pepper preparation, excuse me, and then we'll actually go through the experiment in the next video. Culture Media. Solid Culture Media is a mixture of agar and nutrients poured into Petri dishes. In this exercise, we'll demonstrate the steps for preparing brain-heart infusion agar. Always check the lot number and expiration date. The right panel lists the composition of the media and the final pH. First, Add 100 milliliters of deionized water to a graduated cylinder. Place a stir bar in a 250 milliliter flask. 
For the next step, we need an analytical balance. Place a weigh boat onto the balance pan. Press the tear key to zero out the weigh boat. Use a lab scoop to add 5.2 grams of brain heart infusion agar to the weigh boat. Now add the powder to the flask. Add about 75 milliliters of deionized water. Place the flask onto a stir plate. If you're using a combination hot plate and stir plate, be sure that the heat is turned off. After about two minutes, add the remaining 25 milliliters of water from the graduated cylinder. Stir the solution until all of the visible clumps have been broken down. Cover the flask with aluminum foil. We're using foil cupcake wrappers because they're the perfect size. Place a piece of autoclave tape over the foil and label it with the media name. Next, use the autoclave to sterilize the media. The heat from the autoclave will also help the agar to properly dissolve in the water. Power on the autoclave and make sure the drain valve is closed. Add deionized water to the level indicator line. Place the flask of culture media into the basket. Insert the basket, close the lid, and turn the handle to create an airtight seal. Use the control panel to set the mode to sterilize. The temperature to 121 degrees Celsius will run this cycle for 17 minutes. While it's running, enter the date and time and the operation details in the log and initial. Once the cycle ends and the pressure gauge reads zero PSI, use heat resistant gloves to slowly open the lid and remove the sterilized flask. Back at the bench, place the flask onto the stir plate and stir the media very gently and allow it to cool to about 45 degrees Celsius. Pour the media into the Petri dishes. The amounts don't have to be exact, but be sure to cover the entire bottom surface which is about 20 milliliters for standard size Petri dishes. Once the media has cooled, it will solidify and turn opaque. Here you can see the difference. The Petri dish on the left has set up properly. Turn the plates upside down to prevent moisture from condensing on the agar surface and store them in a plastic bag until you're ready to use them.